In this tutorial, we're going to introduce uh, the conveyor elements, including drawing straight and curved sections on the display. We're going to include a labor element in the model, and there'll be more on breakdowns and part sizing. So the first thing we're going to do is to bring a part into the model, which we'll call P1. And then we're going to bring a machine. Let's bring in a workbench from the manufacturing pack one. Now we'll double click on this and set the cycle time. 1.85 time units. And we're also on this workbench, we're going to go into the detail dialog and we're going to add a breakdown in the same way as we did in tutorial three. And this is going to be on the number of operations this time. Now we're still going to sample for that number of operations. I'm going to type in here I uniform 2550. That's a discrete distribution, which means that it's the integer numbers rather than the real numbers. So that will be a breakdown somewhere between 20, each 25 and 50 operations. And this is a, a fairly long breakdown of some equipment on the workbench. And we'll say that it takes 45 minutes to repair. I'm now going to clone that workbench because there will be another workbench operation here. And then I'm going to go to the transport tab and I'm going to bring in the second of the two conveyor operations here. We have here a, a conveyor display that is drawn uh, right now at five metres long. The uh, two numbers drawn on the section, the first is the length of the immediate section, the straight piece. The second is the entire length of the conveyor that's been drawn to date. Now, if I hold the control key down, I can hover over the end of the conveyor there and I see I get a, a two headed arrow, which means I can then keeping the control key uh, held down, I can extend the conveyor. Holding the control key down again, I go to the center and I click once. And this divides the conveyor into two sections. So this is an easy way just to divide and uh, change the display of a conveyor. And uh, I'm doing that a few times here. Let's just again divide there by holding the control key down all the time here and dragging around one of the different node positions. I'm now going to hold the shift key down and click on this middle item and that changes into a little square itself. And now holding the control key down again, letting go of the shift, I can now pull out with the left mouse button. I can pull that out to a 180 degree turn. So here we've defined a conveyor layout uh, for a conveyor that has a total length of 23.85 meters. What I'm now going to do is double click on that conveyor. I'm going to give it a new name. Let's do that in here this time rather than the floating toolbar. And let's make the length of the conveyor, the model length of the conveyor, equal the display length. So I'm going for a, a model length here of 23.85 meters. The conveyor that we've used from the designer element is one of two main types of conveyor in Whitmers. This is one where the length of the conveyor is modelled in detail and parts can be different sizes when they are travelling down this conveyor. So we, the, the conveyor has a speed in, if you like, metres per second or metres per minute and the length of the conveyor is in the distance units as well as in metres. The other type of conveyor we have, the first one on the designer set, 
has a fixed number of positions and is a simpler way of modeling where all the parts are going to be the same size going down the conveyor. You simply say how many parts can fit on the, on the conveyor. And we call that an index conveyor. The two types can be changed. So if you bring one in and then want to change the type from continuous to indexed, then that can be done here on the dialog. Um, and you can also change it from a queuing conveyor. That's one that will accumulate uh, items along it um, to one which is a fixed or belt conveyor where if one part stops on the conveyor, the other parts cannot then move closer because they're all traveling on a fixed uh, belt um, type surface underneath. So the gaps cannot reduce between parts once they're on the conveyor. And you have those four main different types of conveyor in witness to choose what's apt for your model. Now I've picked the continuous conveyor for this one uh, because I'm going to have different sizes of parts going down the conveyor. Now we need to set up the routing uh, in this model and the workbench we're going to pull the part out of world and we're going to push to the conveyor. Push to C1. The conveyor is going to push to workbench 2. Equally well workbench 2 could have pulled from the conveyor. Um, we always recommend that you do not do both of those. You only either push or pull. Do not do both in the same uh, model. So we're going to push to the workbench and then workbench 2 is going to push to ship. Just going to move workbench 2 up a little bit. Let's now introduce a labor element into the model. So from the basic tab, we pull a labor element onto the display. And now we're going to set up the rules for the workbenches to use that labor to repair when they have a breakdown. And how do we do that? We click on the workbench, either, either the graphic or the name is fine. And then we go to the uh, toolbar and we're going to use the visual labor rule. This opens up the visual labor rule uh, toolbar uh, area here. And we can select from the first here, from the first pull down list, whether we wish to have the cycle or the repair um, for to have the labor rule. And we want to repair here for the, for the labor rule. So we're going to click on labor, save and close. And we're going to repeat that same exercise for the repair of the second element. Let's just run the model and we see parts flowing through the system and we see the breakdowns occurring when we see the red in the uh, status icon on each of the workbenches and we see the labor attending as we would expect to see so that's a good visual check of the, of the logic. If you turn the walk mode on then you will see the movement more explicitly between the different model elements, including the labor walking to do the uh, various repairs at uh, each of the workbenches. Now, one extra thing I'm going to put in this model is I'm going to double click on this workbench and in actions on finish, I'm going to type in an if condition. And I'm going to say if uniform naught one is less than naught point five, length equals one point zero. End if. Now um, it doesn't matter whether you type these lowercase or uppercase. You'll find they're in uppercase always when you come back into what these uh, what are called actions boxes. Boxes, and here what we're doing is when the cycle for the workbench one is finished, 
we're making the length of the part in there equal to 1 for half the cases. We're sampling a value between 0 and 1. And if that's less than a half, we're saying then uh, we're going to set the length of the part in there to 1. And we will see that happening for the randomly selected parts when we run the model. So now when we run the model, you'll see that half of them uh, approximately are being turned into having a length of 1 on the conveyor. And if we turn the warp mode off, everything will speed up. And of course, they take up more room on the conveyor now. So we're getting the cues going back further when uh, Workbench 2 is broken down. And sometimes even it's getting to the stage where it's blocking Workbench 1 from outputting. Now it doesn't happen very much, but this is again where we need to quantify with a proper experiment to see whether the length of conveyor is enough buffer storage between the two uh, workbenches given the breakdown characteristics of the workbenches. So what we can now do is we can batch again here. Let's batch to Futheim 5000. And let's have a look at the statistics. And we can see how many parts have entered and been shipped and how long they've taken to go, go through the pro process again. And here on the machine statistics, we can look at the chart states. And now these are beginning to get really interesting. The workbenches, we can see the green time is the productive time when the machines or the workbenches are working on parts. The red is the broken down. The hashed red display is when the machines are broken down, but they're waiting for labor. So one resource there, one person moving between them has incurred delays. There have been uh, quite a significant percentage of time where a machine has been broken down and it hasn't had access to the resources it needed to effect the repair. And then we can see what we were talking about before with the little magenta section here in the middle, that actually, because of the uh, usage of the conveyor backing right up, occasionally we are getting some blockage. And that also is non-value added time for the workbench. So um, there's a lot of uh, bad uh, things going on here. Obviously, that amount of breakdowns is not, good, uh, not a good thing anyway. But the whole thing appears to be very inefficient here and ripe for looking at with simulation. You'll notice that the icons then on the uh, change to reflect the size of one uh, length long for the parts and they take up that respective position on the conveyor. If you remember, we picked this type of conveyor because it accurately models different sizes of parts going down the same conveyor. Let's look at the labor statistics for this experiment run. Right click on the labor name and choose statistics. And we can see that the labor was 71.39% busy. So even though the labor wasn't available to do some of the repairs, certainly wasn't 100% uh, utilized. We can get a more detailed report if we click on the detailed report tab here and we can see the percentage of time spent attending the repairs uh, for each of the workbenches there. That's the end of tutorial four.